What's up everybody, Marcus Sarah here. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about something super important. We're gonna talk about the Father's role in our life. The Father's role in our life. We're gonna highlight several key figures in the biblical setting that have really, really played a huge part in moving the Christian faith forward. We're gonna talk about Abraham all the way in the beginning, all the way up to Zechariah in the New Testament. So guys, if you're ready, give it a thumbs up and stay along for the ride. This would be a great video for you to go back to over and over again and learn the importance of why fathers are so important and play such a pivotal role in their children's lives. Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm a father of six kids and one grandbaby. I know I don't look that old to be a grandfather, but I have a four-year-old little grand monster running around uh, controlling the entire family, right? He's all over the place, and, uh, and it's a blessing to be able to be a grandfather and put my hand of blessing on the second generation. How wild is that? If you're a father watching this, have you ever sat with your children and just placed your hands on their head and just prayed a blessing over them? Have you ever sat with your children across from the, maybe the dinner table and you've looked them in the eyes and you've just told them, son, daughter, I am so proud of you. I love you. I adore you. I can't wait to see you succeed in life. Have you ever done that? Guys, I've done that a few times and it blesses my heart to be able to look my children in their face and say, I love you. I am so proud of you. I, you know, just adore you. I want to want to see you grow up to be a beautiful human, a, uh, an awesome man of God, a woman of God, a great father, a great mother. Guys, now that's powerful because here's the problem. Not everybody has that. Not a matter of fact, probably majority of the people out there in the world have that type of blessing over their life. So if you're a father and you're watching this video, take notes. Don't take notes from me. Take notes from what we're learning about that comes directly from the good, good father. Okay, the good, the best father. Okay, we may not have had the best role models in our life as far as fathers. But I'll tell you one thing, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you connect and you plug in to the good, good Father, He'll make up for all that lost time. In the Old Testament, there were several fathers that played a pivotal role in their children's lives. We're going to start with Abram. Okay, you guys all know the story about Abram. He changed his name. Uh, he changed his name and became the father of of many nations. Abraham was originally Abram, and God changed his name to Abraham, meaning the father of many nations, to signify the covenant he made in Genesis 17, verse 5. Abraham showed, there's a couple of points here, Abraham showed his unwavering faith to God and to God's promise, and that influenced his sons. And furthermore, down the road, it eventually also impacted his grandson, Jacob. Now, I don't know if you knew that all of these biblical names are kind of all interconnected some way or another, but Abram, Abraham affected Isaac. Isaac followed in Abraham's footsteps and affected Jacob. Jacob then perpetuated that blessing onto his son's life. We're going to go through that in just a second. Now, you remember the story. This is a crazy story. Remember the story of Abraham taking his son Isaac up to the mountain and uh, listening to the Lord when the Lord told him to sacrifice his firstborn, to sacrifice his son. Now, we may think in our you know, logical terms, that is crazy. Why would God ask somebody to kill their own son? That, that does sound crazy, but God had a plan. His plan was never for Isaac to die. His plan was just to see the obedience from, from Abraham. He wanted to see that Abraham was willing to listen to God, that was willing to trust in God with his entire family. So Isaac was up at the top, and as Abraham was about to sacrifice his own son, 
boom, he sees another sacrifice in the distance. And God told God tells him to take that other sacrifice and to leave Isaac alone. And so Isaac, think about that from that moment on. Now you could take this two ways. Isaac could have been traumatized and said, my dad was out to kill me. Or he could have said, wow, my dad trusted the Lord enough to potentially sacrifice me. And maybe he put two and two together. Maybe he said to himself, I know God, you know, God's will was not for him to sacrifice me. So maybe this was just a test. And thank God that my, my dad listened to God and my dad had a sensitive heart and he, he heard the Lord tell him, it's not time. It's not time. So think about the impact that that had on Isaac at that point. Now, Isaac grew up as a man of faith. He grew up as a man of faith. Now, none of these fathers were perfect. None of these fathers were perfect. The only father that is perfect is the good, good father. None of these fathers are perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Our fathers weren't perfect. And our kids aren't going to be perfect fathers. But there's a story to be told here. There's principles to be learned inside these stories. So don't get too heady in what we're talking about. Feel the essence. See the essence let the essence impact your soul as we're going through this. Now let's talk about Isaac real quick. Now you guys remember the story about Isaac, right? Isaac blessed his two sons, but his sons pulled a fast one on him. Jacob, we'll talk about Jacob in a, in a moment. Jacob was known as the trickster, the liar, the teaser, the phony, the fake, right? The one that was a manip- manipulator. So he stole he, he stole the older brother's blessing. But let's talk about Isaac for a second. Isaac's blessing, although obtained deceptively, had a huge spiritual significance on the role that was played. In Genesis 27, it reinforced the importance of the father's blessing. And so Abraham started this this history of blessings, this tradition of blessings, and it was passed down from generation to generation to generation. Now, we don't have many blessings of the father these days, but I think we should bring the blessings of the fathers back. Some fathers will bless their child the moment they come out of the womb. Some fathers will bless their children on their deathbed. And I think we should keep that covenant going. Now in the Bible, Isaac kept a close relationship with both his sons, Jacob and Esau. His life's trials and experiences served as a lesson on perseverance and faith. His obedience to God's guidance in his life provided an example to the submission of God's will. A couple facts about Isaac. Isaac was the child of promise to Abraham and Sarah. Now let's go to the next generation. Let's talk about Jacob. Jacob, man. Ooh, if anybody can relate to Jacob, I could relate to Jacob, man. Can any of you relate to Jacob? If you don't know the story about Jacob, I encourage you to go and read Genesis uh, Genesis 32 and just dive into the story of Jacob. Jacob, I think, every man can resonate somewhat with Jacob. Jacob was known as the manipulator, the trickster, the liar, and he got a good dealing of what he gave. It got given back to him in his life. He got tricked. He got manipulated for many, many, many years, and it was just a big mess. But eventually, God blessed him. He met an angel one time and he wrestled with that angel in order to get that angel's blessing. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He knew who he was. And at that point, that point, that blessing came, his name was changed. Sometimes dads, sometimes our name needs to be changed, not literally, but figuratively. Okay. Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And Israel means to wrestle with God. Now his experience wrestling with God or wrestling with the angel taught us the importance of wrestling with your faith until you break through and receive that blessing. Now sometimes even in the struggle, at the end of that struggle, there will be a blessing. Sometimes our purpose is found in the problem. Let me say that again. Sometimes our purpose is found in the problem. Now that's not peaches and cream. Not everybody likes to hear that. But sometimes the things that we go through, at the end of that dark tunnel, there will be a promise. There will be a purpose that why we went through that now we'll be able to help other people. Now we'll be able to help our sons and our daughters and our children because of the things that we've overcome. But first, we have to learn to overcome them. Can we overcome them by ourselves? No. 
Can we over the, overcome them with the good, good Father's help? Absolutely we can. There's redemptive nature in God. God wants to redeem us. He wants to, he wants to take us, take our broken lives, and he wants to restore us and help us become whole. Now, Jacob had 12 sons, and those 12 sons played a huge role in the Bible. Those were the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, it says that Jacob had a favorite son. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to have a favorite son or a favorite daughter, but Jacob had a favorite son, and his favorite son was Joseph. Joseph, if you remember, has that story in the Bible in Genesis 37 about the coat of many colors. I encourage you to do a Bible study and dive into that story as well, because Joseph was a cool dude and he had unwavering faith. All right, let's transition to talking about David. David is one of my favorite characters in the Bible, one of my favorite men in the Bible. David was a warrior. He was a true king. He was a man after God's own heart. But David was also broken. David was broken in so many ways. I think he dealt with a little bit of some mental health issues. Uh, you know, if you can read through the Psalms, you'll see where David was crying out, you know, asking God for help one second and then, you know, talking about killing people another second and then, you know, talking about God's faithfulness another second. He was all over the place in Psalms. Everybody goes through the ups and downs of life. David's emotional and authentic expression of faith in the Psalms can continue to inspire generations and generations and generations. I encourage you to check out Psalms and even look at Samuel 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 31. It talks a lot about David's life. His relationship to God and his genuine repentance set a model of humility and dependence on God's grace. Sometimes we can't do it on our own. As a matter of fact, we can never do it on our own. We need to always be there and ask God for that guidance and ask God for help. That's why the Bible says even David did some really, really bad things. David was still a man after God's own heart. It shows the redemptive power of the Lord, that God could even use the worst of us in the worst situations. He can turn around and use us to be impactful to our generation. Now, if you didn't know, one of the greatest kings and most wisest kings in the entire world, Solomon, was actually David's son. And David blessed Solomon. David blessed Solomon as his, as his successor of the king of Israel. That blessing's recorded in 1 Kings 1, 29 through 30. David declared that Solomon would be the king of Israel. And he said to him, As the Lord has blessed my Lord the king, even so he will be with Solomon, my son, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. Now our goal as fathers is to bless our children so that they become better than we were. We wanna bless our children and give them the blessings, give them the principles of life. We wanna give them how to live a great life so that they can then live better than we lived and have a more abundant life than we had. Let's talk about Joseph in the New Testament. Joseph, the father of our Savior, the father of Jesus, Joseph played a huge role in the life of Jesus. He protected him, he nurtured him, he kept him safe. Could you imagine being the father of the Savior? What would that do in your mind, you knowing that you have this gift to the earth that is the Savior of the world? Man, I would be going crazy. I'd be looking over my shoulder. I'd be so paranoid that somebody's gonna try to come and harm us. Now, even though Jesus was the Son of God, the Savior of the world, I believe Joseph also laid his hands on Jesus and prayed a blessing over his son the moment his son was brought to the world. And Joseph and Mary raised Jesus. And you can see it throughout his life. You can see it throughout the New Testament. Then there was this story in the Bible where Mary and Joseph and Jesus traveled to Jerusalem. And then they went back to their hometown, but Jesus stayed in the temple. And it, it was days before they realized Jesus wasn't with them. And, you know, I'm sure they freaked out and they had to go back to Jerusalem. I'm sure they were pretty 
ticked off, you know? I mean, they were human, right? So they probably had these emotions of, why didn't you tell us where you were? And Jesus says, don't you know I'm in my father's house? Like he stayed in the temple. But Jesus was a young boy. But I believe Jesus knew how to take care of himself because his father instilled those beliefs, instilled the confidence in him and the blessing in him to be able to hold his own. Jesus, although the savior of the world, was still human, human in every aspect. And his father poured into him how to be a man, how to take care of himself, how to get himself out of trouble. And so Jesus used those tools that his father gave him to stay behind and stay in the temple. It's a pretty wild story. And last but not least, let's put a spotlight on Zechariah. Zechariah can be found in the book of Luke. Zechariah's obedience to God's command to name his son John demonstrated his commitment to God's plan and obedience to divine instruction. The Lord told him he was going to have a baby. The Lord told him his child was going to be raised up and was going to lead the way for Jesus to come in. Now, Zachariah's willingness and his belief to trust God's promise, I believe, set a positive example in John's life because John grew up to be the mouthpiece, to be the horn blowing in the desert, letting everybody know that the Savior, the Messiah, is upon us. The Messiah is coming. Now, even Zachariah had a moment of disbelief. Hey, as fathers, guys, we're not perfect. We go through ups and downs. We go through these moments of disbelief, doubt, wavering faith. And so Zechariah lost his speech. Zechariah lost his speech because of his, his disbelief. But later on down the road, he gained it back because he trusted in the Lord. It's a pretty cool story. Check it out in Luke 1, 18 through 20. So what does all this mean, guys? What does all this mean? We talked about fathers in the Old Testament. We talked about fathers in the New Testament. It means that we have a responsibility, we have a, a duty to go out and to raise our children the right way, to bless our kids in a way that they will be productive, positive human beings and have an impact on the world like no other. Guys, our job is to create children that are gonna be better than us, that are gonna be wealthier than us, that are gonna be have more impact than us, that are gonna be more righteous than us, that are gonna make the right decisions, And that's our role as a father, our father to put that hand of blessing on our children, to pray that blessing over our children. Guys, if you've never blessed your children before, I encourage you, sit down at the table, put your hand on their shoulder or put your hand on their head. They're they're gonna think you're crazy, I guarantee you, but do it anyway. Put your hand on their shoulder and pray a blessing over them. If you've never ever prayed before, just say, God bless my child. God, give him a mind to see. Give him confidence. Give him strength in the battle. Give him the tools he needs to succeed or her. Because it's not just about our sons, it's about our daughters too. But that's our role, guys. That's our role, men, is to be models for our children and to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Now, family, if you found value in this video, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, let me know some of your takeaways, let me know some of your thoughts, let me know some of the fathers in the Bible maybe that you uh, know about that I did not necessarily cover. Let me know some of the strategies that you've used as a man of God to speak blessing over your family. I encourage you to take this video and to share it out with your friends, and I hope you were blessed by this word, and I ask you to live loud, laugh louder, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you guys in the next video. God bless.